Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to True Sound Studios. I'm Wiesna. Today, I get to show you guys something I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. And that is to modify the console one fader and the console one with a rack plate so I can actually mount it into my studio desk. All right, so let's get into this video and I'll show you guys what I did. Okay, to start, I removed the six screws on the top that allowed you to take off that face plate and then flip it upside down and then remove every single one of the screws on the back here. This will allow you to take off the housing and expose the circuit board and all the faders. So now I brought this over to my studio desk and you can see I installed a right angle USB cable. That's how I'm connecting this to also to have enough space. But I want you to notice the gap up front here. It's about 1 16th of an inch and that's just enough to use a 4U blank panel. You can see that USB cable, how tight the space really is. But this is the 4U blank panel that I'm using. You can get these on eBay, Amazon, really anywhere, and they're pretty cheap. So this is what we're gonna cut out to make our new faceplate for the console one and the console one fader. So now bringing it back to the desk. And now what I need to do is I need to use the original um, faceplate and trace it out on our blank panel, our For You blank panel. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm relining all the screw holes up and I'm drawing a pencil line because I need to utilize every little centimeter of space. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing that pencil line, just a nice little close up you can see. And all we need to do is really just measure that. And it turns out to be Roughly a half inch is just a smidge over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure from the very top of the panel, the blank panel, and I'm gonna measure down a half inch, and that's where I'm gonna line up the original face plate so that I know I'm gonna have that gap that I want to be able to just barely fit this in here. So flipping the original face plate upside down will allow me to lay this on the 4U blank panel and then trace the entire thing out. This way I know exactly what the cutout should be, as well as where the screw holes will be that I need to also drill out of here. One little thing I did learn is when you flip it upside down, it does move the location of the two center screw holes, so don't screw it up like I did. So now, out in my garage, and here I'm just using a piece of scrap wood to put underneath it so that I can clamp it to my work desk so that I can go ahead and cut this out using a jigsaw with a metal blade. So first I just drill a hole big enough to allow my jigsaw blade in there and then tape the bottom of the jigsaw so it doesn't, you know, scratch up as much this nice, nicely painted for you plank panel. And here I'm just using my, my jigsaw once again with a fine metal blade on it so that I can cut this out, you know, obviously as best as possible. It's not gonna be perfect with this. Unfortunately, I don't have any other metal tools besides a grinder and I'm not very good with a grinder. So I just cut it all out and um, of course it's gonna be really rough. So after this, I went ahead and used a belt sander and a sander just to kind of level out some of the little, little warpy spots in there and just smooth it all out. These are the original screws. So I just found a drill bit that's just slightly bigger. Drilled them out um, with the location using the original face plate and then just drilled these out and even countersunk them just a little bit just to make it those uh, screws just a little bit more flush. You can see here, this is the, the rough fit. You can kind of see through those screw holes that everything lined up nicely. Now the difference between the console one fader and the console one is just slightly how they are actually mounted. The console one fader just has screws that go right into the plastic housing, where the console one is like this, where I use some plastic bushings to space out the two layers of the circuit board so I didn't crack it when I, when I uh, bolted it back together. But this is what the console one looks like. That's the one that has the little vinyl spacers in between two circuit boards. So now we're back to the console one fader. You can see here, these just use little screws. So there, there is no nut and bolt with these and therefore there is no nylon spacers that are needed. And then here with the console one fader as well, I once again, I'm using a right angle USB cable. And then additionally, you're going to need to 
um, order a right angle power cable as well that I just cut and soldered on there because unfortunately it won't fit unless you have both right angles. It's just too close of a space. So now I can drop it in place into my studio desk and you see how nice and finished it looks. And I did just have to push that 500 series up maybe a 16th of an inch just to make it fit in there. It was a really, really close fit. Here with the console one, fortunately it doesn't have the power cable. And because these are all tube gear pieces next to it, I have a, a gap in there anyway, so it wasn't a big deal with this. But you can see this is the final look of both the console one and the console one fader with these custom face plates that I made for these. Now for both of them, I bought right angle USB cables. That is the only way to actually get them into a desk like this and, and have enough room to put a piece of gear right in front of it. Now I had to buy a right angle power adapter plug and I just, I literally just cut the cable and uh, soldered this on, but you have to make sure that you keep polarity the same. So the best way to do this is to just check to see you know, which wire goes to what to make sure you don't wire it up in reverse. Now for the console one fader, this has screws that kind of screw itself into some of the plastic housing that is around the console one fader. Now the console one actually has bolts that mount it to it. So you will need to buy six nuts that go on the back side of these bolts. Fortunately, I already had these, so I'm not 100% sure on the size the, the, the diameter of these little nuts. So you might just want to, you know, take them out, go to the hardware store and make sure that they fit. All right, guys. So thanks a lot for watching this video. Once again, all of the links to anything I mentioned in this video are down below. If you guys do want to ask some other questions, of course, you can leave them down below or you can find True Sound Studios on Instagram. It's definitely one of the best ways to get a hold of me. You can do voice memos, send pictures, videos back and forth. It's a really great way to get a hold of me. Additionally, if you guys want to work on a song together, of course, I run True Sound Studios full-time. It's my full-time job. It's all I do is mixing and mastering all online. I also produce custom tracks that you guys will see in the videos upcoming. So if you guys do want to work on a track together, the link to my website is down below. You guys can jump on there, see my rates and whatever, and then you can reach out if you guys want to work on a song together. All right, guys, so as always, thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. But till the next video, I'll see you guys then.